I feel incredibly blessed to share a star tip in finding the working rule for the particular integrals from linear differential equations of higher order. I am sure that you will be able to understand in one go and clarity is going to be your best friend and you have to understand with lot of ease. I am telling you with my own whole experience that it works magically for you if you follow this video right till the end. And here we start and how to find the general solutions of a particular integral. So there are five methods here. The method one is if the function is of the form e power ax. So single e power ax, the question will be of this form. See here e power 4x, e power minus 2x, e power x, e power minus x and e power 3x. So this side we have to find the complementary factor. I made a video for that how to find the complementary factor and this time I am I made this video for finding the particular integral. So if there is a single e power ax and how to solve this. So if f of d of y is equal to e power ax the particular integral y of p should be written as 1 by f of d of e power ax and we have to write in place of da. So a is nothing but the quotient of x. So here the quotient of x is a. If it's minus 1, so we have to replace this as minus 1. And if it's plus 1, we have to write as plus 1. So d should be replaced by a. And after that, after replacing, if it's not equal to 0, and this will be the particular integral. So if f of d is equal to 0, so in this case, so we have to write 1 x in the numerator and we have to make a derivative to f dash of d. And again, we have to substitute d is equal to a. In place of d, again, we have to put d is equal to a. So if this also becomes 0, if f dash of d is also denominator is 0, then again, we have to write one more x and we have to make the double derivative. And again, we have to keep d is equal to a until we get a non-zero value. So, this is how we have to solve. So, if f, f of d is not equal to 0, then this will be the particular integral. So, in case if this denominator is 0, so we have to keep one x and make a derivative here. And again, we have to keep d is equal to a. And if this is also 0, if again f dash of d is equal to 0 here, again we have to put another x and so on. We have to continue until we get a non-zero value. So, this is the particular integral when we see a single e power x form. So, this is method 1 and this is the process. And the second method is, so the second method is the general solution of finding the particular integral and this is of method 2. And here f of d of y is equal to sin bx or cos bx. It might be sin bx or cos bx. See the questions here. It will be of the form cos 3x cos sin 3x sin 3x cos 2x so in this case we have to multiply and divide with 2 and we have to split it and again this is 4 cos x 3 sin x and this is 5 plus sin 2x so if you see any time sin bx or cos bx form so we have to use this working rule so here the working rule is if it's sin bx or cos bx so we have to find wherever we find d square we have to write as minus minus b square so where will we get the b so b is nothing but the quotient of x here so wherever we find d square we have to write as minus b square and after replacing that one so if you if you don't find d square so we have to multiply with the conjugate factor so for example if it's 1 by d plus a we have to multiply with d minus a in the numerator as well as in the denominator and again a plus b into a minus b is nothing but a square minus b square again we will be finding d square and again we have to keep minus b square in place of d square and so on we have to continue in the numerator we find d so we have to make a derivative so this is the process if you find sine bx or cos bx if it is a single sign or single cos, we have to use this process. So, it is so simple that in place of d square, we have to write b square. So, b is nothing but the quotient of x. And the third case here is the method 3 is. So, how to find the general method of finding the particular integral? So, if it is of algebraic expression. So, here the first method is exponential form so this is an exponential form and this is 
trigonometric form it is a trigonometric function and this is an algebraic function so if you see this is an algebraic function the questions will be of this form so x x squared x cube 2x 3x 4x 5x x power 1 if you see of this kind the working rule will be like this so f of d of y is equal to x bar k and we have to write uh, for particular integral y of p is equal to 1 by f of t into x bar k and we have to reduce in this form as 1 plus phi of d so we have to take some common factor here and we have to show 1 here 1 plus some the function in d so again we have to raise this from the denominator to the numerator and inverse is seen here and frequently we have to use uh, this kind of expansions after using this kind of expansions so we have to so d is the first derivative d square is the second derivative and d cube will be the third derivative so there are lot of videos uh, using this examples and uh, you can watch those and this is the working rule and in particular if there is an algebraic function so we have to use the expansion method and, th and the fourth one here is so if you see it's a combination so the general method of finding the particular integral so here f of d of y is equal to e power ax into v v might be something or the other from the three functions it might be this one uh, exponential functions or trigonometric functions or uh, algebraic functions so so this is e power ax so there are two things here there is a combination here so the questions will be like this so d power 4 minus 1 of y is equal to e power x into cos x e power x into again cos x e power 3 x into cos 2 x e power x into sin x x square into e power x so there is a combination of e power a x remember so from the three cases are different and the fourth case is different so if you find any combination here the working rule will be like this so e power ax into v so yp the particular integral we have to write as 1 by f of d into e power ax into v so first of all i have to reduce this one so i have to separate this one so in place of d i have to replace as d plus a and I should keep this e power ax aside and v will be there. So, v might be a single exponential function or trigonometric function or an algebraic function and we have to use the previous methods. So, now operate v alone by the previous methods and we will get the solution. So, this is the fourth method. By seeing any combination of e power ax, so we can identify that this is of the fourth method. If it's single e power ax, we have to put d is equal to a. If it's single cos bx or single sin bx, we have to replace d square by minus b square. And if it's an algebraic function, we have to take common factor and we have to write in the form of denom 1 plus some function in d in the denominator. We have to raise the denominator and inverse we have to expand using the expansions. And this is the fourth method. So it will be in the combination of e power ax and in e power ax is uh, kept aside by keeping in place of d as d plus a and again we have to operate using the previous methods and the fifth method to find the particular integral will be x power m into v so this is most important one so here x power m into v it's a combination with an algebraic function so here the fourth method it's a combination with an exponential function so if it's a combination with an x power m into v so x square sin x x cos x x sin 2x x square cos x x cos x so if you observe from this method so which working rule we have to use so there are three uh, methods here so if it's x power m into sin ax so sin ax we can write as the imaginary part of so this is the imaginary part and the real part so if it's a sin ax we have to write this as the imaginary part of e power i ax so we have to write the particular integral as imaginary part of 1 by f of d into this one x bar m into e power i a x and again this is a combination with so this is of the fourth method it's a combination with an exponential function we have to use that method fourth method and if it's an uh, if it's a f f of d of y is equal to x power m into cos a x so we have to write as the real part of so this is the real part of e power i a x so real part of f of d of y x power m will be as it is and cos 
and this is the real part of this is e power i a x and the next one if it's x v it's of power 1 if m is equal to 1 here so it's of a power 1 so we have to use this formula as the particular integral is equal to x minus f dash of d by f of d into 1 by f of d into v so v is nothing but this function so this is how we have to solve and this is how we have to identify all the working rules and let me tell you once again so this is 2 and this is 1 See here, this is 4 and this is 5. See here, let me tell you once again, it, it's a single e power ax. It's a single e power ax, we have to keep d is equal to a. And the question will be of this form, single e power ax. And if it's a sine bx or cos bx, we have to write d square is equal to minus d square. And if it's a, an algebraic function, so we have to take we have to write in the form of 1 plus the function in d and we have to raise uh, to the numerator and we have to expand using these expansions. These expansions are also very easy to understand and practice. And the fourth method is it's a combination of e power ax. See here the questions you can identify very easily e power ax into some v. So we have to bring this e power ax aside by keeping d is equal to in place of d we have to write as d plus a and again there will be a single v it might be an exponential function or a trigonometric function or an algebraic function three three methods any of the method you can use and solve depending upon the question so it's a um, cos x so it's a trigonometric function we have to write d square is equal to minus 1 here also d square is equal to minus 1 so here we have to write d square is equal to minus 4 like that and here if you see it's a combination with x power m so if m is greater than 1 so we have to uh, use this one as we if it's a sine ax we have to write as the imaginary part of x power m into e power minus ax if it's a cos ax we have to write as the real part of x power m into e power i ax if it's x power 1 if m is equal to 1 so this is the formula you have to use and this is how we have to solve and uh, hope you got a clarity on each and every question and uh, if you understand the question you can solve very easily and i have done with everything i wanted to tell you today and i hope that you are confident enough to find the particular integral by your own and thank you this video will be very helpful for your preparation and if you really like you pass it on to your friends because they also need it and before you leave you know what to do please subscribe to this channel share it with your friends and leave a comment below and if you have any doubt any time so this channel will be always available to you and uh, thank you so much for watching and staying till the end.